Hi everyone and welcome to the course Machine Learning from Data. This is lecture one and in this course we will cover the theoretical aspects of machine learning, specifically the math behind various models and algorithms and as we go forward in the course we will uh, uncover certain important theoretical concepts behind some of the very well-known uh, models and algorithms in machine learning. Okay, so the way the course is designed is that I have extracted all the material from this book, which is uh, Learning from Data, and we'll be using this as a textbook throughout. Uh, so this is like the main, the fundamental resource that I'll be using for this course. And all the course material is derived from this book. In fact, all your homeworks and assignments will also be derived from this book. So this is something that you need to have. Um, regardless, I'll also provide the slides that have everything that I will cover in the course. Okay, um, moving on. So the topics that are covered in this entire course are summarized here. So I would say I would go into a lot of detail into each one of those, but here I would just like want to go over what exactly you should expect from the course and what all we are going to cover throughout the semester. So the very first one is what is learning? Uh, we'll spend uh, quite quite a, quite a some time actually answering the question of what is learning? What is the meaning of learning? And this is, I would say, a very fundamental question when it really comes to learning, machine learning as such, right? So learning and learning, yeah, sounds uh, uh, funny. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second most important question is, is it doable at all? Like, can we do it? So that's like, Question number two here, right? Can we do it at all, or it, it is, or is it just that we are simply building up these mathematical models and then they don't work, right? So we will try to verify that. Can we do it? And which, like, this is quite evident that obviously we are able to do it, and that's the whole point of this course, and that's why this course exists, and that is why machine learning as such exists. So obviously we can do it, but we will find a more theoretical background of how can we show that we can do it. Right? So that's point number two. The third as aspect that we'll cover in this course is how to do it. How, how can we do it? And, and in that, we will spend some time because here we'll start talking about some models, some of the fundamental mod models in machine learning and how those models are used to, do, uh, to, to, to make them learn certain things and then predict. Right, So that's, that's what we'll cover and how to do it. And then comes the fourth uh, and and I, I would say one of the like really important milestones, how to do it well, right? So there is this thing that comes into, in, into picture when we actually start working with real world data, right? The practicality of data, the issues with data. So how can we do it well? What are some of the techniques that we can apply using the existing models that we would have learned by then, obviously? And how to, to, to apply those models in a certain way that they take care of the practicality of data. Right, so the concepts like regularization will come here. So we'll talk about those in um, a significant detail, I would say. So that's what how to do it well uh, talks about. And then eventually we'll come. So this is like the fundamental uh, theory behind uh, machine learning. So this is the fundamental theory. And if we have covered this, um, this is the, the core of this course. This is the hardcore theoretical component of this, this course. And we will establish that like certain models, like the linear model um, is, is, is really important and how like fundamentally we build on that, right? So that's another thing that's like really important. And then we'll, we'll like, once we've established all that, right? Um, then we'll move on to the general principles of learning and then the advanced techniques, as I said, once we have an idea of what those basic models are, we'll start building on that and come to advanced techniques. Right? So some of the advanced techniques that we cover are essentially built on the gui guidelines that the basic theory that we already developed in this like first phase. So I'd like to call this like the first phase of our uh, course. Right? So once you have like these first four or five um, things done, right, you are ready to implement and work with real world data. So the primary focus of the course, I would say, is supervised learning. And I'll come to that, what supervised learning is, what unsupervised learning is. Many of you might have an idea of what that is, but that's the primary focus of the course. We might touch a little bit on unsupervised learning as well, but the theory that we would have built by then would be sufficient to make you um, ready to understand 
any of the, the paradigms of learning, whether it's supervised or unsupervised. Okay, so having said that, these are the topics that we'll cover in the course. Let's move on. Let's actually begin with the motivation. So today's lecture begins with motivation behind machine learning, learning versus defining. We will formalize what learning is and then set up a machine learning problem. Okay, so let's begin with motivation. And honestly speaking, I don't think in today's world you need any kind of motivation to learn machine learning or to kind of uh, de describe why we are learning machine learning because honestly, machine learning is everywhere, right? So the applications of machine learning are uh, almost everywhere, right? In manufacturing, in healthcare, insurance, customer services, recommender systems, right? Then transportation, logistics, e-commerce, Amazon and other e-commerce platforms are really, really uh, able to tap that uh, potential of machine learning and really recommend things better to the customers and make uh, the buying experience better. Uh, automob automobile like the self-driving car, that is an, an excellent example of AI, which is um, basically a branch of machine learning. So there isn't like anything that I would like to add to, 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 to the things that you already know about the applications of machine learning. It is everywhere, right? You see the applications everywhere. And so that's why we are uh, here. That's why we are discussing all of this. And that's why we are um, in this course, right? So you understand the relevance of this course. And that's why we are here. And we've seen this like almost everywhere. So having said that, having like some idea of that this is an important uh, area of research or area of, of uh, otherwise work, right? We are here. And so that's the fundamental motivation behind this course. Okay, so then jumping to that basic question, what is machine learning? Because we've been using that term ever since we started, right? So what is machine learning in general? What is learning in general? I would like even strike this off and just say, what is learning in general? So if you go and ask a five-year-old, right? And show them this, this picture, a five-year-old, a human, right? And just tell them, whether this is a dog or not, right? And most likely their answer is yes. So the question here is that how does a five-year-old know that this is a dog? Well, uh, the most uh, feasible explanation is that they have seen a dog before and based on what like they can recollect, they know that this is a dog, right? So the, the, so the next question that comes to my mind is that there are certain characteristics of a dog, right? So the dog has four legs and then certain, uh, like they, they run and then do certain things. And so based on that, we as humans are able to identify that this is a dog and are also able to differentiate whether this is a dog or not. For example, here are like four pictures, right? And if we show these four pictures to a five-year-old, right? And ask them whether these are dogs or not, most likely they will answer correctly that these two are dogs and these two are not, right? So essentially, if you ask a human whether this picture is of a dog or not, we are without any doubt able to answer that question. Yes, this one is and this one is not, right? So it is really easy for humans to identify. But like going back and thinking about it, has anyone ever defined dogs for us? Like a, a dog is a, is a creature that has four legs and certain like, uh, facial features and, and the, a dog runs and so on, right? I would say no. I don't remember anybody defining a dog for me, but I have learned from what I've seen ever since I was a child, right? So we have learned from data and that's how humans learn. And that is the fundamental motivation of this area of, of um, I would say, computer science or mathematics, which is called machine learning, right? Just like human learn, humans learn from data, humans learn from the, the data that they extract from their experiences, right? Similar to that, we can create certain models and certain algorithms that can actually derive, derive information from data and then solve some decision-related uh, problems. Right? So that's that's the, the basic idea here. Okay, so as I said, can we define a dog? Can we write a program, let's say, like here by defining, I mean, can we write a program that uh, defines a dog and then based on that criteria, whatever that program has, can I validate against that, that this is a dog, right? So yeah, I can try something that has four legs, runs with a certain speed, something about facial features, and even more, right? The color and so on, right? But if you look at these pictures, most of them will fit into this, right? 
maybe this has like different facial features so I can like eliminate that but this is like pretty close and even this one is like pretty close like maybe we can eliminate that these have stripes and so there are other animals like a wolf we saw in the, the previous picture that's pretty close to a dog right so the basic point that I'm trying to make here is that it is hard to define things right in certain situations it's hard to define but it's easier to learn by just by looking at it and that is the the concept that I'm trying to get at it's easier to define uh, sorry it's hard to define but it's easier to learn from what we have right so learning as I said which ones are dogs and which ones are not we just figured that defining is like really hard because it's something that I have predefined and then I'm trying to uh, fit everything that I see into that and sometimes it doesn't fit right so either I have that exhaustive list list of each and every feature which again defeats the purpose of writing a program because then I'm putting in too much effort in order to make my computer or my program identify a certain picture of a dog right but 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 we realize that it's humans recognizing is easy nobody defined a dog for us but I can easily identify it even a five-year-old can identify it right so basically, it's hard to give a mathematical definition of a dog, right? Because if I'm trying to write a program, I need a mathematical definition of a dog, which I don't have. And it's it's also not feasible in terms of the amount of effort that goes into it. And and, and also, like on the, on the other side, I realize that even a five-year-old can tell the difference. And we know that they learn from data. And then we can utilize the same idea the way humans learn and then basically establish the fact that defining is hard, recognizing is easy, and then learning from data will be used when we do not have an analytical solution to any problem, just like identifying different pictures. But we know one thing, which is really important, that we have data to construct that solution. And that is what we'll be using throughout this course to solve certain problems in which we feel that the analytical solution to those problems is not feasible, but we have data and we can construct that analytical solution using that. Okay, so this was video one in lecture one. I'll see you in video two where we'll st start talking about some more uh, relatable examples and see why machine learning, uh, how machine learning can be done and can it be done or not, right? So I'll see you in the next video. Uh, thank you.